This video is sponsored by Skillshare, an incredible online learning community that offers thousands of inspiring classes. Because you're all minorities. You're in the Glee Club. Glee's Mr. Shu is framed as the prototypical teacher who cares, but if we look at his behavior, he's actually not the best person to be molding impressionable young minds. La cucaracha! Mr. Shu frequently oversteps the boundary of teacher-student relations, showing dangerously poor judgment as an educator. So I planted the pot in your locker and blackmailed you into joining the Glee Club. He uses the Glee Club to relive his own high school glory days, favors the white kids, and makes everything about him. What happened to you guys? Openly defying me? Unique. You need to tone it down with the whole boob thing. His behavior is sometimes so wildly inappropriate that the show's supposed villain and Mr. Shu's number one critic, cheerleading coach Sue Sylvester, can come across as the voice of reason. So when it came to Mr. Shu's bad choices, what weird messages did Glee ultimately send about what it means to be a good teacher? Here is our take on why Will Schuster is actually the bad teacher of Glee. Did you know there's a forum on my blog that's begging you to stop rapping? Wait, the kids don't like it when I rap? If you're new here, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell to be notified about all of our new videos. Do you plan on having children or just continue to have weirdly intimate relationships with high school students instead of children? Even from the show's pilot, there are signs that Mr. Shu is kind of creepy. He thinks it's completely okay to watch a student take a shower just because he admires his undiscovered singing talent. A lot of what Mr. Shu understands as being one with the youth feels totally inappropriate by today's standards, regularly crossing over what most would consider healthy boundaries of how teachers should act with their students. Twerking is about blurring the lines between past and the present, between men and women, between tradition and envelope pushing. When Rachel Berry develops a small crush on Mr. Shu in season one, he believes that the best response is to perform a mashup of Don't Stand So Close To Me and Young Girl. The pretty raunchy lyrics refer to an older figure wanting to get closer to a younger girl, despite knowing it's wrong. Noteworthy lines include temptation, frustration, so bad it makes him cry. Beneath your perfume and makeup, you're just a baby in disguise. His questionable decision-making is also not a one-off problem. He allows two of his teenage students to join his personal acapella group of older adults, which leads to a situation where the teens perform sexually charged songs with their teachers. Girl, you make me feel real good. In the Britney Spears tribute episode, he initially rejects the idea of performing Britney's songs as too adult for the students, only to end up performing Toxic on stage alongside his students, complete with provocative dance moves. The performance not only arouses multiple students, but also encourages some students to direct sexual feelings towards him. It's in the air, Mr. Shu, let me be your friend the moral panic reaction at the end of the episode and Mr. Shu learning his lesson that they're not going to perform any more Britney is arguably misguided by today's values. The episode follows how the students feel empowered by Spears' music because it allows them to confidently express their sensuality, which helps them to navigate their personal relationships with more self-assurance and open communication. But there's something clearly unnerving about an adult teacher joining in and expressing his sexuality with his students, gyrating next to heavy-breathing teens. Moreover, Will's motivation isn't really what's good for the kids. He just wanted to do a sexy dance to impress his love interest, Emma. Because the boring someone I already am wasn't good enough for you. After the chaos that follows, Shu claims that he understands the errors of his ways. It was inappropriate for me to do Britney with the kids. And we're invited to see Shu as a brilliant Britney type himself through this somewhat confusing analogy. She can't just swallow a grenade and let her talent explode all over the wall. She's got to rein it in, just like you do. Three episodes later, he chooses even more sexually charged material, the Rocky Horror Picture Show. It's another selection some could hail as boundary pushing in a positive, liberating sense. Except again, he only does it to get closer to Emma. I only did all this to get close to you. He casts himself as Rocky, stealing the role from a student so he can practice the touch me number with his crush, even though this means he'll eventually perform this wildly sexual number with a student. And the musical sequence of Touch Me with Britney and Santana watching them features a series of disorienting dissolves between shots of Will and his students all standing over Emma, who's lying on her back, making us feel just how blurred the boundaries are between Will's and his students' intimate lives. 
In the fifth season, he leads a rendition of Robin Thicke's Blurred Lines, a song that had already been widely deemed problematic for promoting rape culture, while his students twerk around him. In yet another example of poor boundaries, Mr. Shu allows his former classmate April, a struggling addict with a disturbing interest in high school boys, to enroll in Glee Club, even after his students and co-workers express concern. April arrives drunk to performances and even gives alcohol to students, but Mr. Shu allows her to go on stage while intoxicated because he puts the club's success above individuals' well-being. Can't let her go on in her condition. There is an auditorium full of people waiting to see us perform. In another incident, when one student expresses her discomfort about a risque outfit, not only does Mr. Shu punish her for refusing to wear it, but he guilts her into thinking that her unease is an attack on the entire Glee Club. What happened to the seashell bikini? I wasn't comfortable. Marley, we're all trying to win a championship here as a team, but you put your personal agenda above that. I'm sorry, but you're suspended for the rest of the week. It's relatable, honest storytelling that Will sometimes stumbles because he's a human being and his role as a teacher isn't his whole identity. But it's also odd that someone who can't separate his responsibilities as an educator from his personal desires and impulses is framed as such a wonderful teacher. You're such a great teacher, Will. No, probably the best in the whole school. Will makes a lot of his bad decisions in order to impress a girl, which leads us into the observation that he can be pretty toxic in his romantic relationships too. The first season frames Will's partner Terry in a very critical, if not misogynistic light, her major sin being trapping him by pretending to be pregnant after she learns she's having a hysterical pregnancy. Her deceit is undoubtedly shocking and upsetting, but Will's reaction here is aggressive, almost violent, as he villainizes her and refuses to listen to her about the false pregnancy that that drove her behavior. It didn't start as a lie. I really thought I was pregnant. If we do listen, we can also catch fragments that explain how she was acting out of insecurity because, like so much of Will's life, their relationship is based on looking back to his high school glory days, instead of him attending to the real person in front of him. You loved the girl you met when you were 15. I'm not that girl. When his main love interest and later wife, Emma Pillsbury, starts dating Carl, it becomes evident that he's helping her to overcome a lot of triggers of her OCD. But Will takes it upon himself to sabotage their relationship and try to win her back at the expense of Emma's mental well-being. The sandwich? The dirty theater? He's actually so, making her better. Now I'm gonna go as Janet because at least she's a ginger and she He's lives. winning. When Emma ends things with Carl, she regresses back to old habits, which Will encourages. I love how you eat your lunch with your little plastic gloves and they crinkle and make the cutest sound I've ever heard in my life. Okay, so Mr. Shu has some big red flags in his personal life and his career as an educator. But what this underscores is how valuable and rare a truly great teacher is. And you can find so many of them on Skillshare. The first 1,000 viewers to click the link in the description will get a month-long free Skillshare trial. Ever imagined yourself joining Glee Club? Skillshare has an amazing range of music classes. I started with Grammy-nominated musician Steph Reed's songwriting for social change, creating music with purpose. I learned how to break down the songwriting process into bite-sized steps and create powerful lyrics of my own. Maybe you're more into movies or writing or illustration. There are classes on virtually any creative process you can think of. What's more, Skillshare is curated specifically for learning, meaning there are zero ads and they're always launching new premium classes. So click the link in the description below and start nourishing your creativity today. The Teacher Who Cares is a beacon of motivation for the angsty, struggling student with untapped potential, swooping in to change students' lives forever. You listen to me. These kids have worked their little fingers to the bone just to play one song for you, so you just sit down, shut up, and listen! Despite some iconic and beloved examples in cinema, like Dead Poet Society's Mr. Keating, it's a trope with clear limitations. Community's Professor Whitman is a parody of this trope, hyperinflating its DNA to reveal how performative these teachers can be. The motto of this class, Carpe Diem, seize the day! No tests, no papers! The teacher who cares is looking for a sense of purpose and a more explosive sense of meaning from their job than is actually realistic. They put pressure on students to perform how deeply their teacher has transformed them. Mr. Shu falls into a lot of this trope's pitfalls. A chronic narrative theme within Glee is that Mr. Shu lives vicariously through his students as he tries to relive his days of his high school Glee club. The feeling that he uses Glee Club to fill a void in his adult life is exacerbated when Will becomes bored of his job after the Glee kids win the national championship and he's finally achieved his teen dream. I'm so bored. What is wrong with me? This is what I've always wanted. I won nationals. 
All this isn't to say that the Glee kids don't matter to him, but that his altruistic framing is false, because a huge driver for Mr. Shu is self-fulfillment. Mr. Shu and teachers who care in general can border on narcissistic, more preoccupied with their magical ability to inspire through dramatic moments and earth-shattering revelations than with truly providing students with a good education, a process that requires consistent attention to monotonous, sometimes boring details. You were too busy chasing your bizarre childhood dream of a Glee Club National Championship. And now that that's over, well, you're waking up to the incessant, mind-numbing tedium that is the day-to-day -day life of a school teacher. Will's self-involved view of his glee club is also apparent in his tendency to reject his students' suggestions. What songs would you like to do? Oh, don't get asked that question much, do we? He tries to make the glee club into a nostalgic mold of the one he remembers or always longed for, and his set lists are full of songs that he wants to personally perform. Mr. Shu, can we do that new CeeLo song, Forget You? Uh, no. Come on, guys, there's gotta be a Journey song we haven't done yet. He also regularly chooses to give the spotlight to his white students. Although it's never made apparent that Shu is doing this consciously from a place of racism, his choices ultimately lead to POC characters feeling disrespected. Everyone knows that Rachel is your favorite. That's not That's true. true. You, you give that skinny Geronimo wearing ass kisser everything. Throughout the first season, Matt Rutherford, a black member of the Glee Club, never has any solos or even speaking lines. His nature as the ultimate background character eventually becomes a point of satire that the series uses to awkwardly criticize itself. Or the black dancer, whose name none of us remember, because you rode his back to a win at sectionals and then promptly ignored him into oblivion. Mr. Shu's mishandling of racial differences is uncomfortably clear in his Spanish classes, where he covers over his poor grasp of the actual subject that he's supposed to be primarily teaching by relying on stereotypes. When Santana, who is Latina, criticizes his mariachi performance for being offensive, Shu's tone deafness points to his overall ignorance. You don't even know enough to be embarrassed about these stereotypes that you're perpetuating. That's it's this sometimes willful ignorance that makes Mr. Shu think it's okay to invade his students' privacy, perform songs about sex with them and in front of them, dictate his partner's behavior, and be racially insensitive. There is one character who is always quick to call Will on his damaging behavior. So is it time to revisit if she ever had a point? Will Schuster is a weepy man-child whose greatest joy in life is singing with children and his best friend, 19. <laughs> The setup of Sue as Will's rival and polar opposite makes sense. She's the sports mindset to his arts one, a more conservative family values pushback to his liberal self-expression champion of the cool kids versus the creative underdogs. Her villainous disdain for the Glee Club and dirty antics to sabotage it are comic relief and plot obstacles, but they're also an interesting contrast to the way that she, in practice, actually empowers many of her students. Yeah, well, Madonna's legend. I want my girls to learn all the lessons she has to offer strength, independence. And despite her surface absurdities and crassness, her criticisms of Mr. Shu sometimes sound strikingly reasonable. She repeatedly confronts Mr. Shu about all of the lines he's crossing and the importance of boundaries when it comes to the student's artistic expression and sexualized content. There are limits, Will. There is a line. And for reasons I suspect have nothing to do with your kids, you crossed it. After the Blurred Lines incident, Sue not only highlights the song's problematic nature, You do realize that Blurred Lines is a song about date rape, don't you? <laughs> but also the harmful messages that Mr. Shu sends by taking part in the performance. You, a married 37-year-old, just performed a song about coercive sexual advances as nine minors twerked alongside you down the hallways of a public high school. She also schools him on his treatment of disabled students when he inadvertently ostracizes Becky, a student with Down syndrome, by treating her differently than her classmates. She's not like everybody else. I want you to listen to what you just said, William. It seems to me she just wants to be treated like everybody else. In the final season, we see Sue delivering a fierce monologue that dictates every way in which Will has messed up as a teacher. From his favoritism within the Glee Club to his incompetence as a Spanish teacher. You have befouled the profession of teaching by accepting not only one, but two Teacher of the Year awards despite not speaking a word of the foreign language you purport to teach. Her brutal lecture is indicative of the writer's awareness of how he has fallen short, while Sue, who consistently outperforms our expectations, has a evolved into a nuanced anti-hero. Moreover, her role as a 
third-party perspective calling out the self-important absurdity of Mr. Shoe's Glee Club drama is vital to the narrative's digestibility. Isabel Lewis, writer for The Guardian, states that the self-referential jokes and witty one-liners, mostly from Sue Sylvester, made the bizarre storylines easier to swallow, and a cast of arguably unlikable characters easier to root for. Without Sue, all we'd have is a cast of characters that think it's okay to perform the cell block tango as domestic violence awareness while completely missing the point of absolutely everything. It's going too far to call Sue any kind of model teacher. She does questionable things and bullies the students, but she's an illuminating mirror of what Mr. Shu lacks, underlining that some of the most important things a teacher does can be counterintuitive, hard, and unglamorous. Despite all this evidence that he's far from an ideal teacher, Mr. Shu undeniably inspires many students. And no matter how depressed you get, no matter how hopeless or alone you feel, you'll try your best to imagine all of the amazing experiences you have ahead of you. He does his best to help them with their problems when they have no one else, connects to them as equals, and introduces the power of artistic expression as a means of self-discovery. As much as the show does see and call out his mistakes, it ultimately believes in how much talented, generous, creative types have to give, even when they get a lot wrong. And together with all the other teachers on Glee, Mr. Shu reminds us just how huge a responsibility and gift being a teacher is. It's a power like no other to guide young people's paths toward figuring out who they want and don't want to be. Being a part of something special does not make you special. Something is special because you are a part of it. Mr. Shu, I love you. This is the take on your favorite movie shows and culture. Subscribe so you can watch all of our videos.